Welcome, this is my instructional video for multiplying and dividing signed integers. By signed, I mean positive sign or negative sign. Okay, so here's the rule for multiplying. When they're the same signs, that ends up being a positive. When they're different signs, that will make a negative quantity. Here's the point of confusion for most kids is you say, hey, what's a negative and a negative make? And they always answer a positive, or they almost always answer a positive. But you should be more discriminating. You should say, well, what operation are you talking about? If you're talking about multiplying, yes, a negative and negative multiply to make a positive. But if you're talking about adding or combining, then a negative added to a negative actually makes a bigger negative. So if you owe $10 and you owe another $15, now you owe $25. So the negative didn't go away just because you had two of them. You just get more negatives. So... That's the important thing to recognize is for the signed integer operations, the difference with negative numbers when we're multiplying and when we're adding. So if you differentiate which operation you're doing, your sign errors go way down. Okay, so, but this video is just on the multiplying. You'll have to look at my other video for the combining. Here we go. So definition of a negative sign means opposite. So here's what's going on is... We have 5 on the number line. Well, what is 5? Well, 5 is the distance from 0. So when we have positive 5, that says, hey, we're 5 to the right of 0. And we have negative 5 that says, hey, we're 5 to the left of 0. Now, here's the thing. If this is 5, which is 5 to the right, what's the opposite of 5 to the right? Well, it'd be the same distance, 5, but it'd be in the opposite direction. So it would be 5 to the left. So the definition of a negative sign you can think of is just mean opposite. So here, here we go. So this is 5. And then we take the opposite of 5. So boom, that will reflect it. And by the way, here's an important point for the future. When we multiply by negative 1, that causes a reflection. So if we reflect this about 0, then boom, it ends up on the other side of 0, but the same distance, 5 units. So we get negative 5. And then we say, well, what's the opposite of negative 5? Oh, well, that's going to be positive 5. Okay. Well, if that makes positive 5, so this part here makes positive 5, then what's the opposite of positive 5? Well, that's going to be negative 5. Well, that means this whole expression right here is negative 5. So what's the opposite of that? That's going to be positive 5. And then, okay, so this whole expression right here makes with the four negative signs, 1, 2, 3, 4, that makes positive 5. That's what this says, right? But what's the opposite of that positive 5? Well, that's going to be negative 5. So know what, notice what happens every time we add a negative sign to the previous expression. It just reflects it about zero. So we keep adding negative signs. All that's going to do is going to bounce this number back and forth to five to the left of five to the right of zero, five to the left of zero, five to the right of zero, five to the left of zero. And notice there's kind of a pattern at work here. The pattern being whenever there's one negative sign or an odd number of negative signs, right? Hey, that ends up being a negative five. So when we have one negative sign, obviously that's negative 5, right, or the, the opposite of 5. When we have three negative signs, that's negative 5. We have five negative signs, that's negative 5. So whenever we have an odd number of negative signs, we get a negative number. But notice what happens when we get a positive or an even number of negative signs. We get a positive number, and no negative sign, obviously, is a positive number. So there's the pattern. Now, that means you can look at something like this and say, well, hey, those guys pair up to make a positive, those guys pair up to positive, so this whole thing is going to equal negative 5. Now you're using the pattern you discovered here to your advantage. And math, I tell people all the time, math is all about patterns. Okay. Now here's another way to look at it. So you can look at this as the distributive property. So you have 5, and then we have negative 5. You notice this guy right here? This is negative 1 times negative 5, and a negative times a negative is a positive. 
And then this is a negative 1 here times a negative 1 here, right? So a negative times a negative is a positive, and then that positive times this negative will make a negative. So that will be negative 5. And then all these are negative ones as well here. So we have a negative times a negative, which is a positive. This positive times that negative makes this whole thing in the, the big parentheses a negative. And that negative times this negative makes a positive. And then all these are negative ones too. So negative 1 times negative 1 is a positive, or negative 5 times negative 1 is a positive 5. Positive 5 times negative 1 makes this whole thing a negative 5. Negative 5 times negative 1 makes that whole thing a positive 5. And positive 5 times this negative 1 at the end is a negative 5. So again, if you think of it using this distributed property, property, that's just another way to think about it. The result's the same. When there's one negative or two, two negatives, switch to a different color again. Oh. So when there's two negatives, we end up with a positive. Even number of negatives, four negatives, end up with a positive. When there's an odd number of negatives, we end up with a negative. So it's the same end result. Okay, so here we go. So negative 2 times 3. So, well, 2 times 3 is 6, so I know this is a 6. And then a ne uh, negative times a positive is a negative. So, and usually for kids who struggle with signs, I would say, look, this is a strategy for any problem that's a little bit um, large for you, where you just don't see the answer. So break it into smaller parts and do the smaller parts. And once you get all the small parts done, you put it back together. Okay, so basically here, that means I'm going to multiply. I'm going to do the sign analysis first, figure out what kind of number I have, a positive or negative. And then I'll go back and do the multiplying and find the actual size, or you could say magnitude or absolute value of the number of the result. So here we go. So we have three numbers being multiplied. So a negative times a positive is a negative. That negative times this negative makes a positive. So I don't have to write the sign down. And then 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. So final answer, that product is positive 30. Here we go. A negative times a positive is a negative. Times a negative is a positive. Times another negative is a negative. Or, again, the short way is, hey, I've got three negatives multiplied together. That's an odd number. That makes a negative result. And then I come back and I do the numbers. So 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 times 4 is 120. This guy right here. So I have one, two, three, four negatives. That's an even number of negative signs. That makes a positive. And then two times three is six. Six times five is thirty. Thirty times four is one twenty again. And that's how easy this is supposed to be. Okay. So there we go. A uh, nice quick video. Kept it under ten minutes. And that's really all there is to say about this because this is not supposed to be complicated. It's supposed to be straightforward. So for most people who are not doing well at this, recognize that you're doing multiplying. So there's your first challenge. Hey, this is a multiplying problem. So I know a negative times a negative is a positive, and a negative times a positive is a negative. And then do the multiplying. Do the signs first. Break them into two parts. Do the sign first. Then do the size of the number. And your error should go way down. Okay, so that's it for this video. Have a nice day. Ciao.